Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Israel as the Food Capital of the World, a discussion on Israel's culinary future that's sure to leave you hungry and eager to visit Israel soon. But first, please enjoy this brief introduction to the Galilee Culinary Institute by JNF. I'm super excited to be sharing with you our upcoming Culinary Academy with the Jewish National Fund and myself in creating uh, a unique international culinary center in the Upper Galilee in Israel. Not a cooking school, a full-blown culinary arts school where you will learn everything about culinary arts from the front of the house to the back of the house, from food security to food technology, from inventory to bookkeeping and accounting and running your own restaurant. Our students will be trained by top professionals and celebrity chefs that will be coming. And we will turn the Upper Eastern Galileo to the culinary capital of the world. Stay tuned. Wow, didn't that look amazing? Well, I'm Stephen Shalowitz, and in addition to hosting this segment, I'm also the host of the One Way Ticket Show podcast, as well as Jewish National Fund USA's IsraelCast podcast. You can access it by visiting jnf.org slash IsraelCast or wherever you like to download your podcasts. All right. With its lush greenery and unbeatable agricultural products, it's absolutely no wonder that Northern Israel is known as the food basket of the country and combined with many ethnic and multicultural backgrounds that form Israel's beautiful tapestry. It was a real no-brainer for Jewish National Fund to focus on developing the Upper Eastern Galilee in the greater Kiryat Shmona region and transform it into the culinary food capital of Israel with the Galilee Culinary Institute by Jewish National Fund. Now, in just a minute, in our conversation, we're going to be speaking with two people that are working to achieve that goal. But first, to kick it all off, we have a very special message from Dr. Ophir Benjamin. He's the Chief Technology Officer of the Food Institute at Tel Chai College. Hello, my friends from JNF. Hi, my name is Dr. Ophir Benjamin. So I want to tell you, the ecosystem of food tech is unbelievable in Israel. So many new companies started. The Academy, together with the industry, making a new innovation, business, and success. Together with Tel Chai College, Migal Research Institute, the Health School in Tzfat of Bar Ilan University, and all the agriculture, rich agriculture that we have in the region of the Upper Galil and the Golan Heights, makes this ecosystem unique worldwide. Together, with the National Food Institute that we're going to establish next year, we will be stronger. We will make this place a heart, beaming heart, who creates more and more and more new ideas and innovations and research. And I believe that together with the Culinary Institute in Gonen, it will be a great partnership that we can match each other and combine it into the fields of research in food science and together with culinary that you guys have in the Culinary Institute. Well, he really couldn't have said it any better. Now, Jewish National Fund's vision for the Upper Eastern Galilee is that the region becomes a magnet for food tech, for business management, for restaurants, food and agricultural R&D, for the hospitality industry, and really so much more, all with the goal of moving population up to the north. Now, Jewish National Fund and our affiliates are truly building a unique ecosystem unparalleled anywhere else in the world. And the Galilee Culinary Institute, along with the Beit Asher Food Innovation Center on the Greenbaum family campus, are key to achieving our goals for the region and indeed for Israel as a whole. And to tell us a little bit more about Jewish National Fund and Tel Chai's partnership in the Galilee Culinary Institute and its benefits to the Kiryat Shmona region and its people, we now welcome Hana Pretzen. My name is Hannah Prizan. I worked for uh, uh, many years for the financial industry in Israel where I was born and raised, but also I volunteered in uh, many, many organizations. Amongst them, I'm the head of the board of governors of Tel Chai College, which is a college located in the northern point 
uh, in Israel. I see a huge, huge opportunity in creating the Galilee Culinary Institute, uh, which will be a possibility to upgrade the uh, culinary industry in Israel and take advantage of the culture mixture that is up north and also of the seven species of the Bible that are growing there. For example, the olives, the grapes, the figs, and uh, all the rest. So collaboration between these two institutes, Tel Chai and the uh, Galilee Culinary Institute, and the uh, country will be a huge, huge opportunity. All right, that was fascinating. So now let's get into the conversation and to talk about the finer details of the Galilee Culinary Institute and really the whole culinary revolution taking place in the northeastern part of Israel, we have our two very special guests. First, of course, is Lior Leibster Kars, master spice blender and chef, owner and founder of Lawat, a biscuits and spice shop right here in the heart of New York City. Lior is also the director of the Galilee Culinary Institute and will oversee the curriculum for the school. We also have with us Nathan Hoffman. He's the CEO of the Galilee Culinary Institute, responsible for the strategic leadership and oversight of the Institute's operational and change management process. Nathan and his family currently live in Sfat, but they actually made Aliyah to Israel back in 2017. Welcome to both gentlemen, and thanks for all you're doing up in the northeastern part of Israel. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Right. Lior, let's first get started with you, because I tell you, you and the entire team have really come a long way since you started this journey developing the Galilee Culinary Institute. And really, before we get into some of the nuts and bolts of what's going on right now and in the new phase of the Institute, if you can just take us back, when did you actually know that you wanted to enter into the culinary arts and to become a chef? I'm guessing it wasn't when you were eating in the cafeteria at the IDF when you were a sergeant. Uh, most likely early 80s, melting chocolate on a radiator with a set of nice. toy pots and pans. Uh, that's kind of the early memories of, of food excitement. Uh, as much as the food scene in Israel growing up in the 70s was far from being good, and that's been kind, um, the produce products were always amazing. So I think growing up, I was just exposed to the amazing uh, culinary scene, which was for years at home. And that's what got me excited then later on cooking a little bit at home, then the army, and then uh, travels around the world that led to this idea of pursuing culinary studies in France and then New York and everything that came with it. How fantastic. So you really started when you were young and you're really uh, finding your passion in something that you started really as a child and had a great interest in it. So really, well done and lucky for you to be able to do that. And Nathan, you've actually had a very interesting trajectory in making it to where you are today at the Galilee Culinary Institute because you were doing M&As for Ernst & Young. So talk to us about your journey there in terms of moving away from that part of the world, how you made it to the GCI and how you and your family decided to make Aliyah to Israel. Yeah, so I'll keep, I'll keep it short because it's a very, very long story. Sure. But... It started out, I knew I always wanted to start a business and didn't know what business that was. So I figured I'd learn the language of business, which is accounting and finance. So I started Ernst & Young, got into auditing, mergers and acquisitions. And then as I was there, I wanted to figure out what I was going to do uh, in terms of new businesses and startups. And so through a long journey, I went out to Arizona, uh, moved out with my brother and spent time working on startups. Um, so while I was getting the experience in the business side, I was always kind of formulating the, the startup side and things that I wanted to work on. So as I was there in Arizona, I worked on several startups and um, I really love putting things together and seeing things kind of, you know, work through, um, you know, different pieces and, and realizing that uh, really all businesses have like a similar foundation. And so that was something for me when I, when I got into um, entrepreneurship that I love to see kind of. The, the pieces and the end result. And so while I was in Arizona, um, I, I was really heavily involved in the nonprofit world. And I, um, I grew up in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, I was not very um, observant. And I didn't really know much about Jewish National Fund. And while I was in Arizona, I actually found out and someone told me about the work they're doing. 
you know, I remember at my bar mitzvah, I got a, uh, a tree. And so that was all I knew about JNF. And so while in Arizona, someone told me about what they were working on. I, I didn't, I had, I had no idea. And I really, um, once I started to learn about their impact, it was, uh, it was amazing. And so I helped start the JNF Futures Arizona group uh, when I was in Arizona. And then I got married. And so again, it's a, it's a long story, but uh, we made Aliyah, my wife and I, three years ago with Nefesh Benefesh, also a JNF affiliate. And um, while I was doing startup stuff and helping some companies in Arizona, um, I was in the north of Israel and <clears throat> basically trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was doing work from America, but I, I knew I wanted to have an impact in the north of Israel. Didn't know what that was. And so I figured I just started doing some networking. And when I was in the north, I went to a food tech event and I saw Russell Robinson. And that's where we met before at a Shabbat in the desert in Arizona. And we started talking and I said, look, if you know of anything that's going to have an impact in the north, let me know. I'm, I love entrepreneurial ventures. I love starting new things. And let me know. So after some time, I spoke to Lior, I spoke to Russell, and uh, we finally got to a uh, an interview. And uh, you know, everyone saw my resume and saw the work that I've done in the past, and you know, the letters with my name and all, all these fun things. But uh, I said, "Look, guys, you know, there's there's no culinary background. Uh, I'm not worried about that because uh, I love putting it together. And we obviously have Lior, and JNF has obviously superstars all throughout uh, Israel." But I said, there's no, you know, there's no culinary background. I didn't work in any restaurants. Uh, I can understand processes, but uh, that wasn't a, a main focus. So the beauty of the, the team that we have is, is both of them said almost, you know, together that you don't need to know the culinary side. Um, Lior has the culinary, you know, JNF has obviously their affiliates and, and their partners all throughout Israel and through the U.S. and their amazing um, donors. And so it was, uh, it was really an amazing experience to see them really focus on the business and creating something new um, with a fresh pair of eyes, uh, someone who hasn't had any coin background. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very unique to find two people that have the same, you know, kind of mindset, a visionary mindset of, of creating something new. So that's kind of the, the short version of that. And I know you like to eat, so you do exactly, you have a little bit of a culinary interest there as we all do. Listen, Lior, I want to take it back to you right now. First of all, I have to congratulate you and the team on the website. It's GalileeCulinaryInstitute.com. Once again, GalileeCulinaryInstitute.com. I went on it right before our conversation today. It is really beautiful. It's very well done. And really, congratulations to you and the team. I understand that you're already accepting, shall we say, expressions of interest from up-and-coming chefs, from students that want to apply or are expressing an interest. Can you talk a little bit about that in terms of the type of students that are expressing interest in those that you're hoping will apply to participate in the Institute? Yeah, so thank you. We're very uh, proud and happy with the site and invite really people to check it out, sign up for the newsletters and updates. And as you mentioned, uh, people can express whatever interest they have, whether it's uh, to become a student down the road whether it's to um, graciously help us build it uh, via donation um, and just uh, you know, be in touch, keep up and seeing what's happening. Um, we're opening this institute for, for students from all over the world. So as long as you think that this could be of interest to you, then please uh, check it out, sign up. We're uh, in the middle of working on our curriculum and defining exactly what classes and courses will be there but I should say overall, if you have an interest within the culinary world, we could be a good fit for you down the road, whether it's cooking or baking or beer brewing and food science and technology, or even recreational of bringing your family or just another friend for a day, an hour of cooking and having fun. We'll have that too for you. So make sure you sign up, get on board so we can keep up to date and, and notify you as things are moving along. And I once told you in a separate conversation, I'm going to sign up for a short-term course because God knows I need help in the kitchen. <laughs> Makes two of us, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You sharpen the knives, Nathan, and uh, I'll bring the appetite. There you go. Well, on to you, Nathan. I understand that there was something called the Curriculum Summit, which was hosted by the GCI. What's important about it? What was important? And what should we know about it? Yeah, so we, we just concluded it uh, a few weeks ago. And what was very unique is we had basically experts from all over, you know, America, Israel, and some people that have had worldwide experiences. And like Lior was saying, we're, we're fine tuning of the curriculum. 
And we've done a lot of research. We've really dug into areas that culinary institutes are lacking, things that need to be worked on. But what we wanted to do was, was test it and speak to the professionals, people that are in the industry. So we, we spoke to people, whether they were in the culinary world or in the, the business world, the leadership world. Because one thing that we, we know we want to do is, is have a unique program that actually adds value to the students so they can leave and become leaders. That's one of our, our big goals is our students to become leaders in the culinary world. So we had professionals, like I said, from all backgrounds, um, people that have started culinary institutes before, people that teach classes, um, business mentors, people that have experience in big business, small business, entrepreneurship. So also students, I mean, we, we had such an amazing turnout, over 100 participants um, in 12 sessions. Each session was 50 minutes long. Um, and, and the only complaints we had really were that the sessions were too short. So that's a, a very good thing. Another unique aspect of this is these individuals, a lot of them have no, have never heard of JNF. They're probably not Jewish um, and they've never even heard about the work that's being done. So it was so unique to see everyone want to come together uh, under one real core principle. And that is creating a corner institute that really impacts the students. And that is, is it's such a unique thing. Everyone came together, again, not knowing anything about JNF. Obviously they did some research, um, but not knowing anything about them, knowing about us, you know, they did some some stuff to, to learn about us, but they all wanted to contribute to the greater good of the culinary world. Uh, so it was very, very unique. We, we got so much great information and it also helped solidify our thoughts. I mean, we, we really realized that, okay, we know business and leadership is something that's lacking in culinary institutes. Uh, we know people wanna learn hands-on and, and we know in the North of Israel, that's a very easy thing. So. A lot of the things that we, we thought we needed uh, were confirmed, but also things that we, we didn't even think about, like apprenticeships, like when they could happen. I mean, usually you have a typical apprenticeship or externship or internship in Lior, you know, whatever we know, we're not sure what it's called uh, in, in, uh, in many of the realms, but, you know, usually it's at the end or maybe it's right in the middle, but why can't it be throughout the week? Why can't it be throughout the month? So we really are trying to figure out what is going to provide the students um, with the greatest experience so that when they leave, they have an impact. And then also something that Lior always says, and we've been talking about is, you know, it's not about them leaving. They can always come back and, and go back and forth. You know, if they need more learning, they need extra curricular, uh, you know, experience, they can come take another couple classes, you know, fine tune some skills, whatever it may be, but it's really creating a relationship with the students and creating something that, that works out long-term. Lior, anything you want to add to that? No, I think it was an amazing uh, four days of, like Nathan said, uh, so much talent and people who willingly gave their time and, and knowledge and with so much excitement that gave us even more excitement and proved uh, how right we are and that we're on the right path. And uh, I'm excited with Nathan to share in the next couple of months with everybody the uh, suggested curriculum or programs for the future um, and, and involve people from really all over the world being part of the community of the greater Kiyach Shmona area, but bringing all of these professionals to that region uh, for now virtually and then physically. Um, so yeah, great excitement uh, all across. Well, gentlemen, that sounds fascinating. And let's take a look at what one of the participants had to say and why this undertaking is really something that she wanted to be a part of. My name is Radisha Francis, and I am a culinary business, entrepreneurship and management strategist at the culinary management company. I provide professional resources to culinary businesses. I decided to participate in the curriculum summit because what the school, the institute is offering is very interesting to me. And what I like the most about it is that it does not only focus on the individual as a student, but an entrepreneur. I always tell people that culinary school does not prepare you to be a owner, it prepares you to be an employee. And the immersive approach that GCI is taking is that it's not only for those who are interested in learning the trade, but for those who are interested in business, also accompanying it with the tourism aspect and also 
taking into consideration other factors of the food industry. And I think this is very important because not only will you get an academic education, but you'll also have business skills once you leave there. And I find that the attrition rate in the food industry is so high because most people have no idea how to approach business in the food industry. So I look forward to seeing how the company grows, how the Institute grows, and how other industry professionals can participate and contribute to the success, not only of the Institute, but the individuals that come. And I, I'm very, very, very grateful and impressed to see the business, the business elements that they're adding to it. So in my job as a strategist, I provide consulting to major companies, four and five star hotels and restaurants, but also to small individual businesses. And the greatest challenge that I find in working with businesses is that they really don't understand the legalities, the legal requirements, the technical requirements, the industry requirements. They don't know these things. And at Galilee Culinary Institute, I can see that from the Curriculum Summit alone and doing research on the Institute, that this is going to be truly different. And I am glad that it's being done at this time in the industry when everything is changing. So some people say it's a new normal, whatever it is that people might want to refer to it as. I think this is a very, very, very important time for this Institute to be established and to contribute to the success of the industry. Well, we want to thank Radisha for that. You know, one of the things that I think is so fantastic about the GCI is that students will be able to learn from top chefs from all around the world, including Michael Salomonov, of course, the founder and chef of the award-winning restaurant in Philadelphia called Zahav. I can't wait to make it down there and have a meal there. Um, and chefs like Michael do play a very active role in developing the big picture for the vision for the Galilee Culinary Institute. And I know that we have a very short clip now from Michael, so let's roll the tape. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Solomonov, and uh, I just want to tell you that I am excited, ecstatic, and enthusiastic about GCI and uh, celebrating the Galilee, bringing people to the Galilee, and uh, debuting the first ever Israeli Culinary Institute. Uh, focusing on the foods of Israel, of the people of Israel in their entirety, and uh, the cuisine, which is a true metaphor for the country. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you, Lior, for making this happen. Uh, thank you, Jana, for also making this happen. And thank you to all of you for including me in this, and I'll see you next year. It's always great to hear from Michael. And Lior, he's one of your council members, right? So talk to us a little bit about his involvement as well as the other members of the GCI council. Yeah, sure. So Mike was a dear close friend and we had the chance with you, Stephen, to do an amazing evening in New York. Right, um, at JNF House, I remember. At JNF House and raise lots of money that night uh, and have lots of fun. Um, Michael is uh, part of our culinary uh, council of professionals. Uh, that also includes Dana Cohen, the former editor of Food & Wine magazine, and Chris Shepard, a chef and owner of a few restaurants in Houston, Texas. Uh, Michael and all of the two, and there will be more down the road, um, you know, gladly joined our team and working with Nathan, with Russell, with the JNF team and everybody to build this to become really the best institute that we could do and contributing after their knowledge not only helping us to build curriculum, but acting as our ambassadors over the years in their respective regions and uh, helping us contact new talent, new um, chefs, new professors. So really being an integrated part of our team for the long run. It's not uh, just building it and then leaving us, but really committed to being with us. So we thank them and we hope to bring more and more like them to join us over the years. Yeah, I think it's fantastic because they're some of the best in the business. And I remember going down to Houston with you as well for an event for Jewish National Fund and for GCI and meeting Chris Shepard down there. And he's an absolute force of nature. So really, I think the students are in for quite a treat when they learn from all of them. Now, Nathan, the uh, Institute's development continues to go from strength to strength. So congratulations indeed to both you, Lior, and the rest of the team. And I believe that thanks to a generous commitment from Stephen and Linda Rosenfield in Arizona, GCI by JNF, will now incorporate the Rosenfield School of Culinary Arts. 
So tell us about the impact a gift like that has on the Institute. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you, you really can't uh, express the gratitude for, for someone um, providing so much for the Institute. I mean, just having them involved in general, I mean, you know, Steve is, you know, has a great background in, in business, you know, in restaurants and, and several other businesses. And so having them involved is, first of all, a blessing with their expertise, but then also them helping to fund. I mean, this is what allows us to create such unique program. And it allows us to, to really create something that is going to them an impact and, and allow their legacy to live on. So every student will be able to, to get a degree from the Rosenfeld Culinary School of Arts. And, and so it is really, uh, it's a huge blessing to be able to um, get such a, a contribution that's gonna have such an impact on our institute. Indeed. Now, Lior, when you partner with an organization like Jewish National Fund USA, you know there's always going to be a broader, more strategic aim, a more strategic approach to the support. So I'm wondering right now, just in the moments that we have left, if you can share how you feel GCI by JNF fits into Jewish National Fund USA's larger vision for the Galilee region. And also, if you can share a little bit about what it means to you personally, because of course, is I believe you mentioned at the top of our conversation, you grew up there. Yeah, so uh, what better way to, um, to go back home? You know, I was born and raised in the greater Kiryat Shmona area <laughs> uh, in Kibbutz Dan, which is eight minutes drive from Kiryat Shmona and, and about 10 minutes from where GCI is being currently built. Uh, and I think those were the foundation of my initial uh, conversation with Russell Robinson and Jewish National Fund is aside from our love for culinary is how can we use GCI as the best tool as many other ones that JNF is building the medical center and, and, and the food tech center to bring life back to this region. How can we attract families, companies from Israel, from outside of Israel to come and build their home, build their businesses in this amazing region that has so much to offer and, and hopefully have some of our graduates stay in the region and make it their home, open a restaurant, open a business, join an existing one. So as much as we uh, know that we are gonna help also people go back to their home countries and origin and start their businesses, we hope and we know that by doing a GCI in this region, it will bring life, create job opportunities, housing, and business opportunities in the region. And this is why I decided to partner with Jewish National Fund on creating the Galilee Culinary Institute. All right, Lior, just to build on what you just said, we actually have a brief clip now from Yael Pellet from Kibbutz Gonen, who's going to share a few comments with us. Hello, my name is Yael, and I live here in Kibbutz Gonen, and I am a member of this community. And we are very excited from this new project that is about to come uh, of the Culinary Institute by the JNF. Today, the dining room building is standing empty and quiet. And we're looking forward to see it coming back to life with students from all around the globe coming to study here in Gonen, in this Culinary Institute from the top chefs. Small local businesses see the opportunity of collaboration with this project and it will impact on the um, tourism and recreation industry here in Gonen and I think in the whole region. This project will affect our community in so many good ways. It's already bring families that interesting of buying a property in the new neighborhoods of the kibbutz. So hopefully in this coming year, this institute will start to building up here in Kibbutz Gonen. And I want to say thank you. And we are waiting to see you here. So as we wind down our conversation, we'd love to hear some closing comments from both you gentlemen. Nathan, why don't you take it first? Sure, thanks Stephen. You know, I think the most important things are the impact that our students will have and also the impact on the region. And so like if you're, you're listening to Yael when she was saying, there's a unique aspect that people are already purchasing homes before the Institute is even being completed, which is, is amazing. I mean, you know, you already see life coming to the region before we even started, um, you know, building our campus fully. And we started building, but um, to, to have that impact is unique without, you know, having our Institute, you know, running in full steam. 
And the other thing is the students have an impact wherever they go. You know, we want culinary leaders. We want to create leaders throughout the world, whether they're, wherever they're going, either their hometown, or hopefully they're staying in Israel and spending time with us a lot longer. But the key is culinary leadership and, and really having an impact wherever they go, whether it's a leader of two people or a leader of a thousand people, we want people that want to have an impact and are going to make a difference. So, you know, this is what we're excited about. And, and I can't wait to have our first students enroll. And Lior, final thoughts? Yeah, uh, I'd like to um, leave our, our viewers today with, with three kind of uh, pillars of our mission and not necessarily by order. The first is we are bringing change to the Upper Eastern Galilee. We're bringing life. We're, uh, we're reviving the region and we'll be a, an integral part of this community. The second is that we are reinforcing the status, the status of Israel as a leading force in the culinary world globally. And the third is we uh, set ourselves to train and, uh, and shape the minds of the next generation of culinarians who will bring change back in their home countries, their home cities. Some will stay in Israel. Uh, all of that in the beautiful part of the Northern of Israel. This is our open invitation to all of you to join us today to this journey and help in whatever way, get excited, get interested, ask, help us build this amazing project Hoping to see you all in a couple of years in the Galilee when this opens. Uh, thank you. We'll see you there. Lior Leif Sarkars and Nathan Hoffman, thank you so much for joining us on this segment. We look forward indeed to seeing you up in the Galilee. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in indeed to this segment to learn about all the exciting work that's happening now in the Galilee, especially with the Galilee Culinary Institute by JNF and really what it means for Israel, for Israelis, for students, for the global culinary community as a whole. So we thank you very much for joining us. And we understand that the first cohort of students is set for the fall of 2022. So do mark your calendars. It's really not that far off away. Once again, the fall of 2022. But in the meantime, I'm Stephen Shalowitz. Bon appétit and bete avon. Thank you, Stephen, Lior, and Nathan. And thank you all for joining this session. A reminder that we begin tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific for our session entitled Why Beersheba with special guest Beersheba Mayor Ruvik Danilovich at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tune in for Going Home to Israel, stories from our students to hear from students who are studying at Alexander Mus High School in Israel right now. Good night.